Hey, how is everybody doing? Welcome back to the channel. As you see by the title, we are doing stock up, stock down for the first time in this Minnesota Vikings 2021 season. Coming off the heartbreaking, gut wrenching loss that we all experienced this Sunday, stock up, stock down. We do this every Monday now. Every Monday, I'll come out with a video. I give you three Minnesota Vikings players whose stocks are up after the Sunday performance, and three Minnesota Vikings players who are down. Thank you guys so much for the support on the channel. It really helps a lot if you guys do subscribe. Love hearing from all your comments, likes, and everything. But let's get right into it. All right, we are going to start with the stock down. Stock down, this pretty much means they are not trending in the right direction. And I think the first person that comes to mind for me, it, and who, who had the biggest negative impact on the game yesterday to me, was Brashad Breland. Brashad Breland, he just consistently got beat on routes yesterday. He made it very easy easy that was the number one thing i saw everything that jamar chase did to him everything that whoever whatever receiver was matched up against him it just all came easy to them i didn't understand what the vikings game plan was when it was 40 seconds left in the first half no timeouts and jamar chase just kind of jogs past brashad brashad breland i don't know if he thought he had safety help but then again you just can't let a guy get naked five yards behind you that just can't happen especially you got to be kind of self-aware with the time and the how many timeouts the Bengals have you just got to keep everything in front of you in that situation even if you assume you do have safety help over the top Shaw Breland, he did have an off game. This is his first time in the Zimmer system. Zimmer's corners always say how much Zimmer asks from them. So it could be a little bit of that. But Brashad Breland, his stock is trending down as of most recent this Sunday. My second player whose stock is trending down is Garrett Bradbury. I'll put a lot of the offensive struggles on the shoulder of the center as well as the quarterback. I think the center, I thought Bradbury did a very poor job in the running game. The times, the plays that were considered good for him was when he just didn't get beat off the ball by five yards. There was a couple plays when the Vikings were in eye form, and I remember Dalvin Cook amounted the times that he had number 63, I believe it was, on the Cincinnati Bengals right in his face. Sometimes Brad, 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 Garrett Bradbury got beat on one move, didn't really put up a resistance, and leaving Dalvin Cook with a 350-pound defensive lineman right in his face. Lineman's able to get his hands on him. Dalvin Cook's going down. Dalvin Cook, they didn't really let Dalvin Cook beat Dalvin Cook yesterday. And I put a lot of that on the center. Garrett Bradbury, the fall starts on offense. I get it. That's going to happen in week one. But as you as the center and the leader, and he is, him and Brian O'Neill are the veterans of this offensive line. Same with Rashad Hill. You got to have the group going. He's been inconsistent since we drafted him. And I think this is just a prove it year for him. This is a contract year for him. And I would say... If this was ending the season today, I think we would all have a, a lot of doubt of bringing him back as our starting center for next season. Garrett Bradbury, prove me wrong. Hey, you've been inconsistent your whole career. So follow it up next week with a huge performance by shutting down J.J. Watt. But right now, Garrett Bradbury's stock is trending down. My third player, and actually we have a coach on here whose stock is trending down, is Mike Zimmer and Kirk Cousins. If we're talking bigger picture, this was the worst way they could have started the season. You know, I think a lot of fans are in the same impression if they both missed the playoffs this year, the Vikings missed the playoffs, they both should be gone due to the cap hit and due to the kind of longevity that Zimmer's had here without really getting over the hump. And if you look at the Vikings next four games, it's in Arizona, Cleveland, or Seattle, and then Cleveland both at home, those, you're going to want to win at least two of those or else you're sitting at a very ugly one and three record. So it's going to be an uphill battle from here on out, but also with the penalties, I put that on the coach and the quarterback. I understand they both can't be out there making sure their guys aren't fully set before the play is snapped, but it's about leadership. It's about when you have those guys and you have a big time game, you make sure they are always set. You make sure they're not committing those penalties. I know it's easier said than done, but it always seems like with the Chiefs, Buccaneers, uh, Bills, Ravens, they were always ready to go. This will not happen to those really well coached, those Sean McVay Ram teams, those Kyle Shanahan 49ers teams. It just seems like it doesn't happen to them. And I understand that's mainly not on the Mike Zimmer, it's on the players too. I think everybody's accountable for that. But as a head coach and quarterback, that just can't happen. All right, well, let's shine some positivity right now because I did think there was a pretty standout players for me personally starting off with michael pierce his stock is trending through the damn roof right now he had two sacks seven tackles and was just a force every single play he was in there he brings energy i think he's hilarious when he's on the field when he rubs his belly he's huge he's everything the vikings needed in an interior defensive lineman being brought in this season good for him played incredible 
played out of his mind. I think Michael Pierce, I am so excited to watch him every single game this year. That's all I really got to say. Michael Pierce, props to you, man. You really balled out this Sunday. Great to watch. Two sacks, interior force. That's all I got to say about you. And my second guy who is trending up is honestly one of my favorite players in the Vikings now, and that's KJ Osborne. KJ Osborne, again, brought swagger during warmups. He was dancing in warmups. I saw that. And then just a big time play he had on third and 24, getting up, screaming in people's faces, he's giving life to a kind of lifeless offense at the time in the game. I think he's good energy. I think he's a positive guy. And he balled out yesterday. He had some big time catches. He had a huge fourth and four catch on the final drive when Kirk Cousins was trying down and get the game tying field goal. He doesn't catch that. We don't even go to the overtime. We're not even have conversations about the Dalvin Cook fumble. He played incredible. Him, Michael Pierce, Two guys who aren't considered the star stars of the team, but they played as as good as anybody else did yesterday. So props to those two. And my third guy is actually Kirk Cousins again, because I understand Kirk's downside of the game yesterday. You know, he couldn't escape pressure. He, you know, he couldn't he he couldn't overcome the mishaps. But damn, the mishaps were huge yesterday, and he gave them a chance to win. If Dalvin Cook and those refs don't call that a fumble or if Dalvin Cook just doesn't fumble and the Vikings go on and chip in a 40-yard field goal to win I mean I am saying Kirk Cousins had a hell of a game and if for a quarterback a lot of it had the be- like a lot of it is a script if you're a quarterback you are loving third and twos third and fours third and sixes because that's when you can take a chance that's when you just need to go get the first down and it's way easier you know because you still have the threat to run you know teams can't just pin their ears back and go get you kirk was sitting out third and 13 all game so i do think there was a ton of positives with kirk's game yesterday he was just very up and down with him so i think he's also trending up if he just sticks to the positive kirk i feel like we have good kirk and bad kirk but hey if they count that justin jefferson that touchdown he's got 350 and three and if cook doesn't fumble i mean he's got 350 and three on a road game where their where his offensive line got called for 10 false start penalties that's pretty impressive so i do think kirk i have a little more faith in him going on the road this year actually i thought he handled the crowd noise really well he did have bad moments i mean it shouldn't even be a fact that his offense is committing those false start penalties but for him to overcome those obstacles props to you kirk way to ball out thank you guys so much for watching skull vikes see you guys in the next video coming out later today gotta get that win next week